Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Moequa, standing in front of the native tree park here in Moequa. It's a gorgeous sanctuary, and we've introduced you to this place before, but there's something new here. Being dedicated for this Veterans Day is a new Moequa Veterans Memorial, and as you can see, spacious, beautiful, large for a community of the size of Moequa. And Barbara Jostas, I can't imagine the amount of work that a small community group was able to do in a short amount of time to get this Veterans Memorial ready for Veterans Day. It's incredible. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's astounding. How many of you worked on it? We had a core group of, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, about six of us mm -hmm. that actually oh, started with the process. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a gentleman, 84 years old, who came to the first meeting. One of the first things we talked about was we'd have to gather a list. Yeah. And Hubert spoke up and said, I can do this. Oh, so that's Hubert. And we get to talk to Hubert, right? Sure. About his research sure. and how he figured sure. out 1,700 names, how he, how he gathered them all up. Correct. Okay. Correct. Let, let's, let's walk up a little bit as we go. Now, what you decided to do when this came, came to your mind is you decided, you know what we need to do? We need to honor veterans of all the wars. What had happened, what you need to know, Mark, is that Bootsy Lau, who was the mayor in February before, uh, this would be 209, mm -hmm. in February had a veteran approach her and say, why didn't you, why don't we have a memorial in Moeco for the veterans? Mm -hmm. And she said, I don't know, but we will. Election came and she didn't get to be mayor again, but she chose to work on this project. Mm -hmm. So that's how it started. We called a meeting uh, August the 18th, and that's when it began. August the 18th of? 209. Of, of last year? 209. Well, that's not a very long time. I mean, that's, that's pretty quick work. Yes. So you had to raise a lot of money. I mean, you're looking at these immense marble slabs, all this concrete work, uh, flagpoles, flags. Uh, th this, this is expensive work. Yes, it is. And you raised all that money in that amount of time? Yes. Yes. But it was amazing it just caught on. By April, we had the money. How much money are you talking about? I'm talking about $55,000. $55,000, and you raised it in Moequa. In Moequa. In, in a period of eight, about eight months. With calls from every place, coming in from every place, wow. want to be a part of the project, you know. Yeah. Guess what? It's raining. It's starting to rain. Go ahead and put cap. your lid on there, and we'll, we'll talk a little more. <laughs> okay, we'll walk up this way because... In front of the, the globe, of course, you've got places where you can sit, rest, meditate. Right. And this is lovely. Whose idea was the globe? Uh, it was a joint joint effort, mm -hmm. a decision among uh, among the members. And we also had uh, townspeople who attended the meetings, and they looked at everything. We showed them everything we had, and, mm -hmm. and they all seemed to think this was the way to go. Honoring those who have served, honoring those who, who will, will serve. serve. So this is an expandable memorial. Absolutely. The plan is to continue. Absolutely. God forbid that we have Absolutely. more veterans. Uh, but we have a standing that. army, so we have. I mean, sure. we have a standing service, so we have uh, kids that are in mm -hmm. service all time. Mm -hmm. We presently know that we have 30, which will be honored Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Is that That's right? Part of our dedication. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So when this is dedicated, you'll have 30 individuals who are presently in the service. Yes. Will some of them get to be here? I'm not sure. I sure hope Wouldn't so. Wouldn't that be nice? I'm hoping to see uniforms yeah. Wouldn't that with be young great? people. Yeah. Okay. Now, talk about raising money. Off to our side over here. Take a look down here. Right. These blocks right. uh, cost a certain amount of money. $500. $500 each. Yes. And I heard that, tell me, correct me if I'm right or wrong, that you've already sold out your $500 Marianne blocks. Marianne tells us we're, we've sold them all. So yes. everybody's very generous on this project, yes. aren't they? Yes, yes, yes. It's amazing. Just amazing. You know, I think you should make room for more $500 blocks. We probably Certainly, if will. you're going to expand this memorial to include other people, you're going to need more money, right? Look, there's rock. We can do it. That, there, you, that's <laughs> right. There's right. You, you have places where you can put it, don't you? Correct. Also, on the outside, and we're going to take a look at these, too, you have blocks on these on these walls, on the perimeter. Correct. And you can see that on those, there's, there's places, too, for people to donate, Absolutely. remember their loved ones, yes. and contribute to this memorial. Yes. During this program, We've got the lady whose husband designed this layout. Yes. She's going to show us the maps, the drawings yes. that she worked from. Um, we also have, you mentioned Hubert. Yes. Hubert is a World War II veteran, a yes. veteran of the Battle of the Bulge. Correct. 
who you put him on this thing and said, Hubert, find out who needs to be, who needs to be named on this memorial. And he did it, didn't he? Yes, he did. Okay, we're going to talk to Hubert. You also have a guest in town, a fellow who travels around to events and puts up American flags where he thinks it's suitable to Correct. do so. Correct. Tell me a little bit more about him. Um, he, had, he had decorated Mount Zion, which is over northeast from here, Decatur, and yeah. then Mount uh -huh. Zion's east of there. And uh, he had decorated there for a veteran by the name of Tilton. I think that was his name. And uh, so some of us happened to be in the Mount Zion area and saw these flags just all the way, decorated all the way to the, to the cemetery. Mm -hmm. It was just beautiful. Just, it just made you stop and grab your heart. It was just beautiful. And so uh, I called Mount Zion and asked them if they could give me his name. They knew his name and they knew his phone number. And I contacted him on Monday after him having been in Mount Zion. And he said, yes, Barbara, I will come. He said the only thing that would keep me from it is if there would be a burial in this area, mm -hmm. then that has to come first. Mm -hmm. That's what he does. He provides flags and a solemn atmosphere for soldiers' burial Absolutely. services. Absolutely. And he has all these flags that he trucks all over the state. He has a thousand all a rolled thousand up in his, in his trailer. And he's here in Moequa yes, helping he you all yes, put he is. the finishing touches on your yes, dedication. That's fantastic. Yes, we'll talk to him as well. Yes, you will. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Mary Ann Steiner, that it hasn't even been dedicated yet, and already you have people that come to admire the Veterans Memorial. That must feel pretty good, it doesn't does. it? A couple of weeks ago on Saturday, right after the alumni banquet, we probably had 25 or 30 people. You know, they don't live around here. Yeah. Of course, it wasn't finished, but they yeah. were here yeah. looking at it. It's, you know, it, they're still putting the finishing touches on it. They're trying to put, you know, get some grass to grow up around it. And, uh -huh. and there's a few things, some caulking and stuff that needs to be done. But, yes. but you can tell very well what it's going to look like That's and what right. it's going to be. Huh? Mm -hmm. Some of this has to settle with the ground. That's the reason we haven't really settled these right here mm -hmm. in front, the big ones, because we need to let it kind of settle on its mm -hmm. own. And then the memorial company is going to come back and level out probably in the spring after it sets for the winter. Mm -hmm. We don't want to yeah. do something we don't want to. For so. sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but people have been so generous. Yes, they have. Um, yes. You've sold out those $500 blocks. The, and you are already planning where to put some more. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> You're already planning, I can tell. Uh -huh. um, you and your husband worked very hard on this project. Yes, we. Uh -huh. and, and unfortunately, it was one of the last things he would do. Uh -huh. he, he passed away since then. Uh -huh. um, but you are left with one of his drawings. He That's started, right. he drew out mapped out what this was going to look yes, like. And I'm going to take that okay. from you if I can, and I'll be very careful with okay. it because I know it's somewhat fragile. And this wind is the devil today, <laughs> so we're just going to sort of... Uh, but this is some of the work that your husband did. He was very detailed. Where everything was supposed to set, the benches that we're on, you can see they're here. Mm -hmm. We got the blocks that's here. He did this all just out of his head, didn't he? Uh-huh. Yes, he did. He came out, I guess he measured the area and decided this is what the interior yes. of it should look like. We knew how much space there was out here and we wanted to fill the space, so mm -hmm. we got on a big piece of paper yeah. and started in. Yeah, it's, it's, a really, it's a really nice design too. It's one thing to fill up the space, but mm -hmm. to have a, to have a, a sense for what yes. really belongs in mm -hmm. a memorial. Yes. Memorials are very delicate That's things. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed this one concrete here. We've fixed it so later on, if we have to, we can add more with sure. wars that may be coming up. They can continue on to the east yeah. here with all yeah. this. You do have, you have room to grow. Yes. yes. Um, now, when you and your husband were planning this, you, uh, you did a little bit of traveling, didn't yes, you? Yes, we did. Why was that? Well, we wanted to see what some of the other towns had to kind of get an idea, and that way kind of wanted to see what we were getting into mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I think what we've got into I think he'd be very happy with it. What uh, what local veterans memorials impressed you? Well I was down to Hillsboro, I've been to Litchfields, I've been to Sturts and Strasburg, <laughs> over to Arcola. <laughs> we've been around. Yeah, yeah. Which ones did you like? Well I liked them all. I mean there's none of them that you could narrow yeah. down. I mean they're all nice. You know I've seen a lot of them too in my travels but this one for a town this size is right. remarkable. It is. It is. That's what everybody tells us that, you know, for the size of Moequa, 
It's really nice what yeah. you've got together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 1,700 people 1700 are, are memorialized in this, mm -hmm. in this uh, a veterans memorial. Yes. And, and likely there will be more. But that seems like an awful large number. Mm -hmm. how, did you, how did you determine that who should be included? Well, we used everybody that lives, lived, or is living in Mawikwa at this time. Mm -hmm. If we've missed somebody, just let me know, because we're going to engrave yeah. some more in April or May next year. Mm -hmm. And all they have to do is pick up a form. They can either get them at City Hall, or I'll have them at the dedication Sunday. And if there's a name that's not on here, we will get it on here the next time through. I'm going to put those in alphabetical order as we have to add to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's our plans. Yeah. Well, good luck. Mm -hmm. It's a heck of a job. Yes, it is. <laughs> but I'm about to get it accomplished. We're about I think. to get it done. Yeah. Okay. That's what I told Barb this morning. We're about to get to the end of this. So, but Barb and I've worked with it quite a bit together. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Hubert Cox, you're a veteran of World War II. Yes. And you got in on this project probably right from the beginning, didn't you? I was at the first meeting they had in October. <laughs> and you probably wondered, <laughs> what have I gotten myself into? I kind of wondered, but I had a grandson that was good on the computer, too. Mm -hmm. And we set up a program to take care of these names and list all of them. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring everybody up to speed on what you're talking about now because I've got in my hand all the names you're talking yeah. about. Somebody, when you had the idea of, of building a, this monument to people who served, somebody had to determine whose names were going to be on there. And it's not that easy, is it? Because you don't just go through old newspaper clips and find out everybody from no. Moequa that served. That's a monumental task. Well, we just connected with everyone in Moequa and gathered names of people that had had a connection with Moequa, teachers and uh, uh, teachers of the schools and all, mm -hmm. and uh, it just all come together. Mm -hmm. We put these slips out to be filled out, and we had real good response. The people were real good about helping out. So you had a form, and you asked everybody in Moeka to fill out, if there was a family member or someone they yeah. knew, to fill out who that uh, service person was, oh, yes. when they served, and then you had to verify and confirm all that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which was, that's where the computer comes in, isn't it? <laughs> that's where the computer comes okay, in. Okay, I want to show the, the list that you were working from here. And uh, this is just one of, let's see how many pages we got here. Oh, we got uh, 48 pages. Oh, you already know how many pages. <laughs> 48 pages, okay. And this is from all wars, from the Black Hawk War. From the War of 1812. From the War of 1812, yes. okay. Then to the Black Hawk War, and then on to yeah. Iraqi Freedom, which is right. still going on. It's still going on. And you came up with 1,700. Yes. More than 1,700 individuals. More than individuals. 1,700 names. Yeah. Were you surprised? I was very much surprised. A town this size? Our population is about 1,900. I couldn't believe there was yeah. as many third as we have here. Fantastic. And, uh, and you're still finding uh, oh, yes. people that belong I'm on still, here, right? I've got a list of um, <laughs> a list of about 23 now that has to be added. I'll be darned. I'll be darned. Well, listen, I'd like to ask you to come back with me to the World War II Memorial. That's where your name is, yes. okay? And we're going to talk a little bit about, about you and, and your experience. I want you, if you would, to show us show us where uh, Hubert Cox's name was on this All right. on this monument, and I'll bet you know a lot of those fellows, don't you? That are on. I there. know, or have had connection with the majority of them that are my age or younger. Uh huh. Go ahead and point point it out to us, Hubert the W. Cox. That is my name, that's where I served in 1940, 1943, 44, and 45. And you were where during that time? I was in Europe with the 104th Infantry Division as an infantryman uh -huh. on the line. Yeah. And that's where I served all the time I was over. In fact, you happened to be there during the Battle of the Bulge, didn't you? Yes, sir. Yeah. 
I was there. We lost our troops for about two weeks. We were surrounded by the Nazi. We had no idea where we were or anything. We finally got back to our troops. How did they find you, or how did you find them? It was a wooded area, and they were keep searching because our whole company was missing. And they were looking for our company. They found us bivouacked out in that wooded area there. You followed them out? Yes. And you were, like you say, surrounded by Nazis. Yes. They must have uh, sacrificed life and limb to get in to get you, because I assume that you'd have been you'd have been lunch for the oh, Nazis. Oh yes, we you? would have been. Yeah. And then we went <clears throat> we went on from there and opened the detention camp in Nordhausen, where the Jews were yeah. murdered. That was a terrific sight. I bet it was. You, in fact, what you got to do, you got the opportunity to be saved and then to go liberate other people. That must have been a wonderful feeling. It was. And I have <laughs> most respect for my people who were in charge of us and all that. They were wonderful to work with. And our commanding officer was Terry Allen later become the mayor of El Paso, Texas. Hey. And he was, uh, he was our, com yeah. our commander. Well, they never forgot you. They stuck with you. They found you. They got you out of there. Yes. Uh, it's possible they, you know, that you could have been just left for, left oh, for nothing. Oh, yes, we could have been. Yeah, good for you. But they knew the company was yeah. in there somewhere. Yeah. That's wonderful. What a great story. Well, I'm proud of it. And I'm proud of this monument being built. You should be. Mm -hmm. Well, Larry Eckhart, this is really a phenomenal thing. We're looking down this country road, the one that leads up to the monument from the highway, and you and these veterans have put up this avenue of flags. It's going to be outstanding. Oh, yeah. Uh, the most important ones are them guys back there. I mean, number one word you mentioned was the veterans, and they are. They, so, you know, you would think that they would feel like they'd serve their time, they didn't have to do any more work. And the veterans come out no matter where I go. I have veterans, veterans and young people. And to me, it's just fantastic. How many flags are you all going to put up? Uh, I'm guessing somewhere around about 700. Wow. You know, yeah. I've got I've got a thousand. We did finally hit a thousand. Mm -hmm. uh, we did Mount Zion. The young man up there, Mr. Tilton, we did him about three, four weeks ago. As a matter of fact, it's been almost two months ago. Uh -huh. And we got enough donations, we can go ahead and get the rest of our flags. So we got a thousand of people up there were just fantastic to work and, with. And this is, this is what you do. You, you're, you're, you're a guy with flags and you go to military funerals and, and you go around to events like this yeah. and you just provide solemnity, the, the uh, patriotic and... Well, the thing is, is I mean, no town can afford to have a thousand flags to use maybe once or twice. They just can't afford it. Yeah. Uh, and with me taking them all over the state, it works out pretty good. Mm -hmm. It works out pretty good. And to me, to be truthful, I'll never have enough flags for a funeral. I don't care if I put up a thousand flags. To me, there should be another thousand. Because you got young men, The last, two out of the last three I've done have been 19-year-old Marines. Yeah. You know, they never got a chance to live. I mean, heck, they couldn't even get a drink in this country legally. Yeah. And yet again, they got killed. Yeah. So, I mean, how do you pay? How do you repay something like that? The Patriot Guard's got a coin they put out for some of the families. And it says, a national debt that can never be repaid. And that's what we've got. We've got a, you know, we've got a tremendous debt that we can never repay. Yeah. So, I, this is the least I can do. It's interesting here, the process here. They, they dig the holes with these... Uh, Oh, I guess so. Yeah, they yeah, just puncture a, it. And that's you... a 25 pound piece of steel. Mm -hmm. And the ground is so hard now that we're having to use sledgehammers to get them in. Yeah. It punches a one inch hole, nine inches deep, so we don't hit any wires or anything. And then the, 
once after we pull the flags out, the first rain or two, that hole fills back in. Nobody yeah. can ever tell we were here. Yeah. A thousand flags. Where did you come by a thousand flags? Uh, a few donations and out of out of my own pocket, but a few donations. The donations help a lot, yeah. you know. But I don't want to stress that because that's not why I do it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, it's to me, it's an honor. It's an honor for these towns to ask, let me come in. Yeah. Because they don't have to. You know, they don't even have to let me come in for a funeral. And the towns have always been so super. Yeah. What got you started into wanting to honor veterans this way? I mean, to, to take to take your flags to, to a funeral for a serviceman or a woman who died. What, what got you started? We had a uh, young man get killed up near where I live. And, I mean, the people were fantastic. There was probably 3,000 people showed up to work. Back. I say welcome, you know, to see him come back, but there just wasn't that many flags. And I thought, nah, this isn't right. You know, the young man died for the flag, it should be there. So we started off with 50 flags, and we're up to a thousand now. Yeah. So. And you, tra you travel a lot. This yeah. is probably what you do now. This is where you spend most of your time. Basically. <laughs> Between here, uh, I'm on the city council where I live, and uh -huh. I run two apartment buildings. But and where are you from? Little York, Illinois. Little York, Illinois. Where's that? Uh, you know where Galesburg is? Yep. 40 miles west of Galesburg. Okay. All right. A hop, skip, and a jump from the Mississippi. Yeah. But yeah, this to me, it's, it's, I'm blessed. I mean, I'm not that religious, but I'll go into a town and it doesn't matter how cold or how miserable it is. Troy, Illinois last year, we did a young man there. It was, I asked him to meet me at the church at eight o'clock in the morning. I pulled in a quarter tail. It was four degrees with a 30 mile an hour wind. There were 12 people there and I'm thinking, wow, this is gonna be a long day. By 8.15, we had 160 volunteers. Wow. We had three church buses, two city squads, a county squad, and a city truck. You know, the people just, and, and they don't know me from Adam. Yeah. But they'll turn out and they'll bust their hump and they'll put up these flags and help me get them up. You can't beat the people. So it's really, like, like I try to tell her, but it's the people, it's not me. Yeah. I just, I supply the flags. Well, thank you for doing it. Oh, to me, it's an honor. It really is. It's a super honor for me to be allowed to do it. And it will be a pretty display for their, for their memorial, too, I think. And it's, and it's a fitting tribute. You know, she said they, the town started raising money for it last year, and they've got it already. That says a lot for this town. Mm -hmm. it says an awful lot for this town. Well, Malcolm Stewart, as we look down the Avenue of Flags from Highway 51 all the way into the new Veterans Memorial, right. you were responsible for holding some of these flags and, and digging those holes, weren't you? Yeah, I had to spot where they went and then just hold a thing for them to hit it. The guys on the sledgehammer are doing the work. 32 years you were in the Navy, is that yes, right? Yes, sir. Wow. And you're retired now. Yes, sir. But you served in two wars. Yes, sir. And retired as lieutenant commander. Right. You must have really liked the Navy because you got out and got back in. That's right. Yeah. I didn't like it, I loved it. You loved it, yeah. <laughs> Tell me, what do you think about this new Veterans Memorial? It is outstanding. It is really outstanding. And what's wonderful about it is that the veterans didn't really do it. That the other people in the community did it. The veterans are working right now, mm -hmm. but they did all this work. And for a small town, this is really an accomplishment. Yeah, yeah. And there's no taxpayer money in it. And it's all, yeah. and it's paid for. And we're just really proud of it. Yeah. It's interesting, you know, the, m most of the people that worked on that committee were not veterans. Right. The guy that does this, these flags, not, He's a, not, a, not yeah. a veteran, mm -hmm. makes you feel good, doesn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is so much different. And also, just the way you're talking to me is so much different than the way they talk to us in Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It's nicely treated as a person, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean that's. Yeah. But I mean, it really is to to know that the not the non-service people, the non-military right. people, appreciate you that much. That's that goes a long way, doesn't yes, it? Yes, sir. Yeah. It really is wonderful what they've done here. It's just it's just beautiful, yeah. and that they anybody that any had any connection with Mawequa can can have their name on it. Yeah. It's a wonderful thing, and we thank you for coming. Thank you, Malcolm. By Veterans Day, these flags will all be taken down, but that monument 
will be there for years and years and years to come, and they welcome you to visit. With another Illinois story in Mowikwa, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. For a DVD copy of this episode of Illinois Stories, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, broadcast date, and topic. You may also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605 or by using our secure server by going online to networkknowledge.tv.